Okay, we are starting with next Casper uh, session. And for, for today, we'll be talking more about uh, alignments and safety. And this is not completely clear to me. And I was, I was watching again uh, uh, Vlad's talk uh, in Berlin. And uh, this diagram is uh, really the diagram that uh, Vlad is, uh, was picturing there. So I, I think that I now have a little more understanding what, what you want to say about this relation with, uh, uh, between liveness and safety. So, uh, Jeremy, you, you, you said that you want to talk about uh, uh, guaranteeing uh, uh, consensus uh, 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 yeah yeah I saw that in the in the paper and I was just curious to know like how like the process of actually guaranteeing consistent which I don't know for me every time if I hear that it's like a double-edged sword because it's like we can definitely achieve this which I think ultimately we can but in the long term as we in the process of getting consistent I'm assuming that nothing, no faults happen, but yeah, I'm just curious to see what that'll look like, like via diagram or something, and how we can achieve that. Yeah, uh, in, uh, you, I think you, you mentioned the last time uh, about, uh, uh, so I, I said you that. Uh, uh, what? You, you don't hear me or? Are you hearing me? Hello. What's happened? What? Are you hearing me or what's going on? can hear you. I'm not sure what, what is the problem. Do we hear me now? No? We can hear you. Yes, we, there's no problem with the sound. You, you can hear me? Yes. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. I'm not sure what I am. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, uh, 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 let me pick this diagram. Uh, uh, how how can we can see this uh, this relation with climate and safety? So, uh, uh, on 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 uh, y uh, axis is the number of uh, number of faults that we we are tolerate, and uh, this number of faults uh, can be. Uh, Notes that they are not responding or Byzantine Byzantine uh, notes. So, and uh, he said that uh, yeah, it's, it's mutually exclusive. If 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 you are offline, you cannot uh, uh, be in the same time in Byzantine. So th that makes sense. And so uh, first for for safety, uh, do you see my mouse? I think so. No, we don't. No. So uh, we have for, for first uh, uh, how how we can uh, see uh, the, the the safety. So uh, if more than if we want to be sure that uh, that uh, uh, that the consensus value uh, will not be changed in the, in the future, we, we must have at least fifty percent of of uh, of validators that uh, say that uh, uh, this consensus value is uh, is, is chosen. So and and, this, and the number of uh, of validators can be like a maximum or or at least fifty percent, and and all of this area is is a safety area. Is, is this make sense? So this yeah. is the yeah. this, this is the number of number of validators uh, that we we choose uh, that we want. I think this is, this is like a number of, of uh, maximum number of validators. Like a, I think the, the issue most people have had with that is understanding how 
with Byzantine, you're still safe up to two thirds uh, Byzantine. Yeah, yeah, th th this is really a relation between liveness and safety. Uh, so uh, on, the, on the other side is uh, liveness, where you can say if, if uh, all, uh, all validators are, are faulty, you don't have liveness. But if you, if you have, uh, if, if, if you have uh, all validators are, are like valid, then you have maximal, maximal liveness. And uh, Vlad was saying that this one third of uh, faulty or this, this is like a, a tolerance for equivocation, this one, one third. It's, it's in, in the middle uh, with the liveness and safety. So th th that's the, the, the whole point. If, if you want to have like a more, more liveness, uh, you will have less safety and vice versa. So if, 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 you, if you say, okay, I, I want to have, a, so this line is, for example, if you have, if you want to have a, to, a more tolerance for safety. So you will automatically go down and you will see on the liveness, uh, now you have uh, less tolerance for, for, uh, for liveness. If, so if you have more, more tolerance for, for safety, you have less tolerance for liveness, and, and if you have more tolerance for liveness, you have less tolerance for safety. But, but also Vlad uh, was saying that uh, if you choose uh, uh, estimator and consensus values differently, you can like, uh, get different uh, results, what, what you want for, for liveness and safety. Thank you. That was, that's uh, uh, glad you explained that. It's clear now. Yeah, well, I was I was watching uh, Vlad's talk, and uh, the first time I, I I didn't get it correctly. So I think that now I <laughs> I bet better understand it. And I was I was confused on, on our our uh, our games uh, that we are playing with with validators. Uh, we are really, really playing with both of these things, and it's it's difficult to to see it uh, when we just uh, uh, write few few messages and try to figure out in, in our heads uh, what's going on. So I'm I'm not sure. Can we go? Can we see uh, in the paper where? where but this is written. I was thinking that uh, this safety proof uh, tells something about that. So, He's saying here that uh, uh, this is like future calls. Uh, I understand this as, uh, so we, uh, at the beginning we have, for example, for integers, we have uh, uh, many different, uh, many different values for, for consensus uh, can be okay. But with each messages and with each, uh, yeah, with, with, with each message uh, and with, with more mes messages and justification, you have less and less options to choose uh, to choose values from from uh, consensus, and now now it makes sense uh, for uh, for for example for median values as consensus as, as like a uh, like an estimator. If you choose estimator for for median values for for integers, it's, it it makes sense to to get uh, like a different values, but as consensus uh, is progressing, you, you will have less and less options, and some integers will be. You, you will help. You, you will. You will have like a. Uh, some 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 values uh, will be uh, uh, will be uh, uh, like more weights. Put more weights on, on, on some values than, than on others. So, I think this these proofs uh, are exactly about that. But for, for from two the different directions, if you if you if you if you want to say and, and I think this is like a, a click, 
uh, um, click example from from previous paper. When you want to say uh, one uh, transition from one protocol state to to the next will contain. So if you have this transition, then uh, this is valid for, for every other message uh, in the future. So transition from, from like, a, like a next message in the future must be valid uh, for, for all the other messages in, in, in the future. Does this make sense? I'm still trying to follow along. So, yeah, we're just trying to like really try to grasp like forward and backwards directions in terms of like what that really means. I would say that um, uh, so this forward direction like the messages that are being passed when like all the validators are trying to get to consensus and backwards direction is when you're trying to trace back all the messages. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, like this, yeah. yeah oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, another, another way to think about it is that is a consistency check um, where any future logic has to be consistent with this history or uh, it's invalid. And yep. uh, the double spend is an example. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, from the last uh, paper, I think uh, this is the same as, as click safety. I'm thinking that uh, maybe now we are looking at, at this proof that was missing from the first paper, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but here's the thing that uh, this e click that uh, if two nodes agreeing uh, on the same message, that uh, yeah, the, the new message cannot exist that will change uh, their mind. Yeah, and then from here, uh, I was uh, uh, I was referring to, to this uh, that you have more than more than one half. What do they mean by lower scores? So the line just above it does not exist any new message from inside the click that will cause them to assign lower scores to E. I is think that like is... the weight. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, the weight on on this particular message. So if, if you conclude that some value is, is definitely like a, you, you made a consensus, but you, you don't know that all validators are agreeing. You, you only have some number of validators, but you can be sure that all other validators cannot change the, cannot change the, the chosen value. I'm not sure if, if this is a, like a click definition. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm thinking that maybe this uh, this proof is about that. That you sounds right. Mm, and this one is well, this is very similar, but uh, um,
Yeah, saying that. So uh, first, you choose uh, what number of uh, of uh, fault tolerance you are accepting. So this t, this t is like a like a like a parameter to to consensus protocol. How many of them? So I'm not, I'm not sure how how you can choose this value before you starting consensus. Because Vlad, Vlad was saying that uh, choosing this uh, uh, this parameter is like it's like a crucial to to good consensus. So you can have, for example, good uh, you can have good consensus, but you are not sure when you have consensus. So <laughs> not very really useful. Yeah, I think we experienced that when we were doing the just like when we were doing the little um, diagrams. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially when like validators like have slightly more weight, and then they just like change the whole entire projection of what messages are being passed. Where yeah. they would have chose, yeah. I should say, a one and a three instead of a four and a five, that changes the whole dynamic of it all. Yeah, and so uh, I think it just more comes down to like in the early stages again, like as they are trying to figure it out, I think that's when it actually is kick goes into effect. So I don't think it matters as much in the beginning, but I could be completely wrong. Like, because in the beginning, it really comes down to like, I want to call them like almost like thresholds of where, once it like hits a key threshold of when a node finally sees another node or a validator at the other, in the other spectrum, like, you know, how how is that? Going to change the dynamic, and if that can change the, the dynamic, yeah, and yeah, and hmm. but we could totally just like write this question down for like Isaac and see if he could maybe help us and answer that. Yeah, and then uh, I'm. Uh, I'm building this uh, uh, like application for for uh, for playing this uh, uh, consensus game. So <laughs> I, I hope that I'll, I'll be done for the next time. I, I didn't make it for, for, for this session. So I'm, I'm, uh, what, what I'm doing is uh, uh, let's let's try to to uh, to uh, uh, to choose this estimated function uh, t values and all all these parameters and. So we can just start uh, sending messages and see if we can uh, like simulate the, the, the whole protocol. That, that's my intention. <laughs> awesome. Um. All right. All right. Uh, so um, let me know when uh, th uh, to stop the recording. Well, I would say um, just are there, for are there other issues, uh, other issues that are on the table, or uh, is there well, more? It's not necessarily uh, pertaining to what we're going over as of now, but I think uh, yeah, I sent this to Joshi, but I was you were you part of the Casper call when uh, Vlad was in it, going over the roadmap? Uh, sorry, you you yeah, asked me or. Oh, oh, that was for a gym because yeah, here I'll send you the link. You can probably pull this up and show it. Copy. There you go. Uh, you put this on or chat or yeah, I did in the Zoom chat. Yeah, and that was from the um, call this week. So I'm not sure if you want to like just like look at it. If we can go over and prep and see if there's anything that's changing in the Casper.
protocols that we've already been learning to see how if anything's going to be changing or checking out the roadmap of like what's going on and what uh, features it might have? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And this is based on, on, the, on this paper that we are looking at. No, that was from um, the, the Casper call this week. Um, Vlad was in it and he sent the roadmap and everyone was like going over like what they're going to be having in it. Well, I had updated this four days ago, so it's pretty current. Mm -hmm. This looks uh, the same as the paper. Yeah, it would be great to have something to, to play with uh, creating messages and sending to different validators and see how this works. Uh, Jeremy, do you feel that we go through the papers, something else, or um, here is the, the guaranteeing uh, consistent. So I'm not sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still trying to understand the um, the um, what's what I'm looking for. Oh crap! The um, yeah the notations so I can kind of understand the actual performance more because every time again I look at the formulas I'm just like kind of lost <laughs> uh, so, sorry I didn't understand uh, everything so uh, can you please repeat oh yeah I mean we can or you saying you want to just go by this um, line by line yeah, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, maybe we can go to uh, uh, this guaranteeing co co consistent decisions. Yeah. So I don't know much about it. So. Yes, yeah, and that's why I figured it'd be something to like cool to go over. But if this is something we might have to wait for, um, like either Josh or Isaac to be in here for, then we can just totally just put it on hold until then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a. question about um, uh, what Greg was demonstrating in the debrief about uh, writing parts of the Casper protocol in Rolang. If I got it right, my, I think that so, so, uh, some parts are uh, written in Rolang. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think that most of it is in Scala. Right. Do we have any any uh, link to the to the uh, stuff that uh, Greg presented in the uh, debrief? I uh, I don't know. Do you know? Is that here, here is here is a, a rolling part. It's part of Casper, but I, I don't, don't know. It's probably not the, 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 the core part. Yeah.
That would be good if somebody can go over what that was in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. It made sense at the time, but I, I can't remember it now. Yeah, maybe some of these uh, things are already implemented in, in this code, right? It must be. <laughs> yeah, no, I think he was presenting something new. Oh, uh, but, but uh, where is the, the code or? Did, did he mention? I don't know, I think yeah, Greg promised it, but uh, I don't know where it is. Well, you mean the Rick Morty summer thing that he showed? I seen one message uh, in Discord. This one. Do do we talk about this uh, this uh, uh, document? Here is the Rick, <laughs> Rick and Morty, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, here's the message. Can you put that in the chat? I, or where can I, I mean, I guess I could find it. You found it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, thank you. And this is probably related to how how we how can we uh, have uh, rolling terms as uh, consensus values. So I'm not sure if uh, if calculating hash are really like a message about this rolling term. I, we probably don't have to to memorize uh, the the whole terms in in justifications. It should probably be possible to just have some hash values of uh, all the terms and just uh, put this in, in justification. Maybe, maybe, maybe even less than that. Uh, this is uh, like a very good uh, uh, discussion for, for the next time. <laughs> yeah, I would certainly uh, be interested in it. I mean, I'm a little lost right at the beginning here, <laughs> before I even start here. I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, accessor notation. Uh, access of notation, uh, I'm not sure uh, relates to, to, to what. 
Uh, the first thing, the message for the first uh, second sentence in the, from the top. Accessor notation. Oh, uh, the. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, this is and uh, the validator of the message equals. Uh, I, I think this is like a, a notation to uh, to get values from this tuple. <coughs> or value, validate of the message equals. Uh, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get a name from the message, uh, you just uh, take the first, uh, the first element. The, the, this is like a, a accessing a, a property uh, on this object. So okay. it, this, this could be like the names of the properties. Uh, and we can say, OK, the, the name, if you give me the message, I will give you the name. Like this uh, uh, vn, and you, you get the v. And this is like the, the validator. Uh, sorry? For a message, you get the name of the validator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think that uh, Vlad uh, is doing the same here. That's, is that, that's the proposer? I, I'm not sure. Is that the proposer or just where you got it from? Or oh, I mean, uh, I think that uh, this is only how to uh, construct uh, this triple and uh, extract uh, values from, from the triple. Okay. <laughs> That's what I, 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 I think that wasn't. Uh, uh, because I, I'm thinking that uh, if you say n, n first, this means give me the, the first uh, element from this message, and the first element is v. Uh, okay. Here in message definition, Vlad is uh, doing the same thing. Uh, so where is the the message definition? Uh, Well, I'm not sure where it's now. Message definition. Uh, the, the same is here, for example. Uh, get, getting the, the message and, uh, and the, this is calculating estimates, it's not uh, the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's just uh, uh, how to construct uh, this triple and, and get values from it. Yeah, it should be just a little bit. Yeah, but I'm not sure how to, <laughs> how, how to calculate consensus values on, on the rolling terms. Yeah. Definitely an interesting topic. You guys like to have to bounce. I'm about to grab my laptop from my friend who's like down the street. So if you guys are still here in like five, 10 minutes, I'll hop back in, all right? 
Oh, yeah, sure. All right. See you soon. See you. Bye. So um, I, the message wouldn't actually be there. It would be an unforgeable name, right? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. I don't know. <laughs> but now, in row line, um, Mm. All my objects, so to speak, you know, are unforgeable names. Uh, why? Why we need? Why? Why we need an unforgeable name in this situation? Well, the message is on the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. It's the, 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 ch the channel as the unforgeable name. That's, in order for you to read a value, it has to have an unforgeable name so you can read it. <laughs> yeah, and this is like a, like a return channel for, for yeah, th th this is like a better of implementation, right? How you can uh, send the messages and... Right. Well, if you write it in the row line, yeah. Um, it 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 all the messages will be in, in our space. Yeah. Right. So it would be yeah, this interesting is, to do a simulation of it in Roline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I I I, I will first uh, try in, in JavaScript and then uh, <laughs> With with only only with integers in, in something something simple. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking that you know of how how do we communicate between blockchains and in general, you know how you can have how how you can be sort of an intelligent shard. <laughs> Um, and um, propose box. Uh, uh, in a uh, intelligent manner to the main shard and other shards. What uh, you mean? Understand is how we address a, and I'm sure there's the information is there, but how we address an unforgeable name on another shard? How do we? What's a remote address look like? <laughs> uh, is is this related? To, like for example. Be between uh, namespaces, like different shards, you, you mean namespaces, or yes, because right, and uh, 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 I remember that Greg was telling that uh, if we have communications between namespaces, uh, namespaces, uh, you must create another namespace, then you can like tr transfer data to this new new namespace, and then from this new namespace to, to, to the other one, to, to the other, to the destination namespace. And then you will have like a transfer. I'm not sure if, if this is the, the only way. That's it, yeah, that's great information. Um, I'm sort of uh, working with namespaces, uh, user namespaces. Um, uh, I'm uh, creating a, a graph model of information resources where you know we can look up a contract we don't have to go through the registry to get it we have our own namespace with contracts with messages with other things okay and you have yours root but then we're going to have nodes in common 
which are the trees that we share, so to speak. Uh, and that's uh, uh, similar in a sense, although... Uh, uh, of co communicating between namespaces, right. right? In essence, we're we're looking for consensus between each other. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm I'm expecting that we can have some kind of a very very good way of uh, writing uh, this uh, this like a converters, but con in in a sense that they can be uh, correct by construction and. and uh, Greg, Greg was uh, mentioning that uh, between uh, TCP IP and HTTP can be some kind of like a protocol definition or connector that can uh, uh, transfer data between the protocols that uh, so you don't have to, to really know uh, what is, what is uh, exactly all the, all the protocols uh, uh, in, in between. So yeah, well, we, we're, we're using GraphQL as a common interface to all of our information resources. Yeah, GraphQL is, is now it's uh, like a uh, uh, new, new, new REST. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it, it does, it, it does much more than that. It does the caching, event handling. Stuff yeah, but but this is this is not part of the the protocol really. So the, no, the, the but but the application needs it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, on on one side, uh, GraphQL is it's 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 like a way to query data. So you can you can query uh, uh, only a uh, uh, portion of data, not the like the the, the whole projection. But on on the other side. Uh, you can query data, but you can query only only like simple things. You, you, you cannot uh, query with some kind of aggregation or, or anything like that. You, you can only have some, maybe some filtering, but this is also not, not part of the protocol. So, Well, it, it's part of uh, the interface that you're creating. Yeah. But um, uh, this, the uh, structure that um, the, the structure that I'm using is uh, a node contract. Um, um, and the nodes are created. Uh, okay, can you show me something? Okay, this is. Uh, actually where I call the node, uh, the use case. <laughs> uh, uh, so the uh, first thing is I look up the address of the node. And then I, uh, I read the name of the node, the unforgeable name of the node from the registry. Then uh, I have to write it back because there's no peek. I can't peek at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I write it back the way I, with no change. Uh, then uh, So when when you say this is like a node uh, name, it's a uh, well, it's the unforgeable name of a node. But uh, when you say a uh, name of the node, it's it's just a like a chosen name for one one channel on. on you don't choose you don't choose the name. You, you it was created with a new. Uh, I knew when you gave it, a, you gave, you said a new X and it created an unforgeable name for that X, which if you save that, it's good. <laughs> it's the name of the channel. 
and then you can use that channel for any purpose. Yeah, and then my question is, why are you referring this as a, as a node name? Oh, okay, well, um, I guess I should... Uh, this is like, a, like a, the, the, the purpose of, of, uh, yeah, of this channel. Yeah, I gotta get, give the information in the right order here. Uh, the node uh, contract uh, creates nodes, and each node has properties and it has links. Okay, that's not, not all it has, but properties are the values that it contains. It's a map of values. Mm. And those values could be processes. It's, uh, uh, it's a capabilities. Uh, uh, oh, you, you, you don't mean on, on R node as a node? What? You, you, you don't mean on, on R node uh, as, as a node here? You mean no? No, a, no, no, no. This is the, these are this is a, this is our objects for the social ledger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Personal. Okay, okay. That that makes sense. Yeah. This yeah. is my personal directory. Okay, so uh, in that I have I have, uh, uh, Okay, so uh, in the node, I have the contracts, a contract. Uh, this is like a field on, a field. on, on this object. It's a field. So, mm. so it has a contract and it has properties and it has links. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, so I, I do a query on the node channel for the properties and I print them. Um, that's not a really good example of a, of a query. Um, let me, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure really how to, how to write queries on. Okay. So query. Oh. Okay. So I query the links next child and properties. Uh, I don't think that's exactly what I created. But uh, when, when you say querying, you mean searching in, in these maps? Yeah, well, I, I, I search in the map called next, then I search in the map called child, and then I return the properties of that node. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is, these are objects in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah I, I seen your, your post in Discord. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is like a uh, implementation of uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, object like uh, language, <laughs> right? With, with the dispatching it's methods and it's object like, but it's you know I'm basically building a graph of all our information resources and all their connections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was listening to Joshi and, and Isaac. Uh, uh, I think that Dan also mentioned this, uh, that uh, it's better to store this uh, in, in, the, in the par terms than in maps, maybe. In so I, I, in, 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 a, in, a, in the par terms, like... Uh, uh, so a try? In, sorry? A try? I don't... In no, 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 in, 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 directly in the rolling. Like directly a, in what? In, in rolling, in, like a ro rolling term. Oh, rolling. Par. Uh, no, this is, uh, and, you know, the, uh, because I, I'm thinking that uh, with, uh, with uh, like a, more more advanced uh, pattern matching we can we can search the the, the r space uh directly so we don't need to use, to use like a map no. i admit i'm doing this for efficiency <laughs> maps, so, maps are high performance rolling terms are not right now <laughs> oh i see yeah but in the future it will be like an opposite <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. This is this is uh, 
February, uh, uh, I don't want it to uh, be uh, not usable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, to not scale initially. It has to scale because I'm going to send you my nodes to put on your graph, <laughs> you know, in, under your organization. Oh, mm. so you can, you, you say that different nodes can, ha can, can, uh, uh, may have different uh, properties, different names, like a different, different graph uh, structure. Well, yeah. Um, and how to, how to communicate in, with, uh, in, in this different, uh, how they, yeah. how they, they will communicate. Yeah. Well, we have here uh, whoops, no right. Oh. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Um, I don't know. I have to figure out how to set this permanently. The syntax equals. Oh, I'm not sure for, for scale. You know. There we go. Um, so, uh, uh, this is the node class. Okay. Oh well, yeah, the, 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 that's the the code you you posted, I think. Right. It's been somewhat improved. Um, I still didn't do the super. Maybe we can do that. I can do that while I'm talking. If you're interested in going into this, what I was just going to show you here was that uh, we have a, a public key here, which I don't use yet, so that uh, you can. Uh, encrypt the uh, uh, the uh, this is like a security you can you can say okay I, I, I accept messages only for from like the one the node who who, who signed this uh, data or right um, well it, yeah, there's a couple of uh, couple of things. That, you know, basically, you need it to exchange. Um, names, in essence. <laughs> um, can you can you uh, go to the code if it's not a problem? Um, No, sure. I, um, uh, the, uh, okay, class method start with a, the name of the method, in this case, new. Uh, and the super is a little different uh, here. It's if you look, if you, when, you, when you look in a map for a symbol for, for a name of a link, if you don't find it, you go to the super node and look for it there. Okay, mm -hmm. in other words, I can have uh, personal contract names. I can have shared personal contract names, and then there could be global contract names node. So that uh, my personal command can override uh, a group command or a system command. Yeah, this is like a, like an inheritance in, in object. Right, right. right. I don't know what I should call it, if uh, super is the right thing to call it, but. Yeah, 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 Dude, this makes sense. It's, it's, for, for me, this is like a, uh, I, was, I was thinking about uh, object inheritance when I said super. <laughs> okay, so, uh, right, but it, uh, it's not class inheritance, which is different. It can also, uh, the, uh, uh, the contract 
Okay, if you create an unforgeable name for the contract, and uh, you do that, uh, in uh, register, uh, actually in the instance method register, when you register a node, it creates an unforgeable name. Um, well, it, it, it inserts into it the uh, Well, it creates a URI and it um, sets in the node a URI field. That's not what I'm talking about. It doesn't even look like it'll work. Um, oh. It puts the URI in the node. Well, in any case, uh, mm -hmm. back to the. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to make this quick. Okay, so then uh, uh, then there's a linking. We basically need a link, an unlink, uh, uh, in order to wire our nodes arbitrarily. And then you have two two way uh, of linking, not uh, right. It's it's directed. Yeah. Well, right. there's a in the graph of nodes. Okay. There's a there's there's a mapping of connections named connections. But you 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 have source and target, right? It's it's not just connection between nodes and it's in, in each direction. Your your record. You need to recognize recognize the direction of the, of this connection. Yeah, it, it only it only makes uh, the connection in one direction. But you, 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 you can conclude in which direction it is, right? Yeah, the direction, the direction is, uh, uh, is always from this node to that node. Mm. So you're setting uh, links like a links field, and links links is a, is a, is a map, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a map. Yeah. So uh, link link no links is a, is a key in the, in the links uh, map. Okay, so I set the links in this node. to uh, a node get links where I set the name of node two. Oh, it's a map inside the map. Right. Because, oh, yeah, links, links is, a, is a root map. Links is in the, is in the node map itself. It's in the node map, yeah. yeah. It's, which has links and it has properties. It's, mm. Okay, as well as yeah, this is like a really, really nested structure. This is the the, the real uh, this is a graph, right? And, and the idea graph. in part is that these will correspond to strongly typed nodes in GraphQL, as well as mm -hmm. serve a purpose uh, that I have, which is. Uh, uh, this creating the uh, just 
the the DID directory, uh, decentralized identity directory primarily, where if you say our chain, you get back the um, um, the DID record for our chain co-op. But if you say our chain slash member slash Jim Scarver, you get back mm. information on my persona on our chain that's public, whatever. I mean, go, uh, so uh, creating a hierarchical directory of identity. And uh, this is similar uh, to, to this Firebase that you already have, right? You show me on on Metamos you have a Firebase database behind. Yeah, well, it, it, right. A Firebase is basically just a key value store, but it, uh, so this 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 is yeah. Nested. But the uh, Firebase al allows you to to have nested structure, right? But you you maybe it's not so easy to create create this uh, structure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's, it's similar, right? I'm just doing specific things with it. I have specific things in the node that constitute a node. So this, uh, and that's the other thing I was thinking of creating like an object class that this would inherit from or something. Since there are so many, since it is basically just nested. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, 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 you're uh, saying that uh, for uh, for GraphQL, you want to have um, representation of uh, of these node contracts because this uh, uh, this nested nested maps can really uh, be gen uh, they can be source for for uh, types in in uh, GraphQL that directly because they are really GraphQL is is really the same thing they are they have Types that that are nested maps. Okay, and um, okay, so we have the query. Okay, which is a recursive function. Okay, and if it's a single item, the last item on the list. Um, say my uh, indenting is screwed up here. Still screwed up. Oh well. Um, So I have a special message. I don't know if I need it. it self just returns this. I don't know if that's necessary at all. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's uh, so last last not found, I have here um, uh, is where we put is where we were putting in the uh, the. The two do, the uh, two do for super. Uh, whatever. So then we call the contract again with the uh, super, which I could do. Uh, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible here until everything's working. I'm sure everything's working perfectly. And um, the, this, this query is really about uh, getting the, the, the right node. Yeah. Um, so this is what, what you're saying. Uh, if you want to R chain, you query for, for R chain. Uh,
so I, I uh, so I get the last key from the chain and return that. So whatever key they put last, I just return that uh, property of the node. When you say last, this is the, the only one, right? Or, or I'm missing something. You have only only one name in, in this list. You are you're matching, matching on, on singleton list, right? Yeah, there's only one name in the list. And I just get that. And in, 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 in the trying. other case, you are matching like the, the more. Yeah, it looks like more nodes. Test here is not quite right. But I'm, I'm going to ignore that for now. But when we have so the, the head and the tail, uh, that means we have a list that's more than one long. Okay, and. Uh, and uh, so I, when is this case when you have more than one? Right. So I, you know, uh, if if the 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 first thing in the list is in this is in the links mm. of this node. Okay. Then uh, uh, then I recursively call the node contract. With the link head, get head, this uh, current key, and I make a query with the tail. Mm, interesting. So I, I traverse down the list until well, I get to the tail of the list and I return the result. Um, here again, if I don't find the head of the list, I can go to the super. Um, and uh, where is this? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, where am I? And for now, we can we can query uh, only by matching uh, exact value of strings. Or I'm sorry, we we, we can only match, uh, but by exact value of, of strings, right? We we right. cannot match starting with some string or no. Um... Pattern matching. We can do some interesting pattern matching, but not on strings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it, this can be like a developed, uh, like a low level in, in rolling. So yeah, this, this, is, this is interesting. And, okay. and then I have the register, which registers the contract and puts the contract URI in the object. Okay, so this um, uh, no, it doesn't. What, what am I talking about? This is uh, just registering the yeah, I just registered. Node. But uh, you're registering node with some. Oh, with with uh, unforgeable name, right? Yeah, this this is, uh, this, it's an unforgeable name. Right. The name of the contract, which was uh, created, okay, which we created in the new, right? But you're not using this uh, URI. We, we, we created node here, okay, and then. We defined it as a contract here. Mm. So the enforceable name we created here uh, is what we send messages to to execute this contract. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's why it's, it's bundled, right? Um,
So then I uh, uh, if I create a URI for the node itself, the node object, I store that URI in the node, so I only have to get it once. <laughs> oh, I see. And this is also, this is URI. Um, but th this is not an unforgeable URI. This is like a regular URI, right? Right. It's, um, it's just locally okay. to this node. URIs are unforgeable to some degree. If you, you know, you know if you encrypted the URI, uh, it's not guessable as far as I understand it. And you, but you have only one URI uh, for, for one node. Well, or, it, can, it can have URIs in, you know, in uh, nodes that it links to. Um, it can have URIs in its properties. Why, why do you need URIs? Well, to, to access other contracts, for one thing. Um, the, well, to some extent, I'm trying to reduce the need to have a URI. <laughs> um, because you can put the, uh, uh, the contract address directly in a link. In, you know, uh, or in the property. A contract address, uh, like a, this unforgeable name of, of this contract, or right. I don't know how that works exactly, <laughs> but it seems to work. Um, <laughs> if you look at. Um, Uh, well, here's here's my test cases. I create three new nodes. Um, one named root, one named contracts, and one named the third node, which has a link called loop that points back to the root node. Hmm. And then I, then I link, then I, I link the root node next to con, keyed next to contracts. I probably should have called it contracts, but uh, well, maybe I'll call it my contracts or something. Hmm. Um, and then I. Uh, then I uh, uh, link contracts to, uh, uh, to what I'm going to call end, which is a third node. Okay, and then I get all the stuff. I read the three nodes and I write them back again. Um, then I do a query here, I have different test cases here, where I follow from the root, I follow to the next, which is the contract, which I follow to the end, which is the third node, which I follow the loop, which is the new, the root node again, I follow the next, um, which is contracts, and I return the contracts of the properties directory, and this returns name equals contracts. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, that, this is interesting. Okay, they're going to register the node. And I print out the three nodes. Um, and then when I access it, Oops. Hmm. Okay, so, um, this is the uh, URI of the node. Of, uh, okay. Note. okay, that I printed out when I created when I, uh, before when I used the new. Okay, and um, then I read the address of the node. And then I read the node itself, the map. And I write it back again. Um, print it out. Okay. Uh, I print out. Properties. I don't know why I do this. To print out the contract. But uh, this uh, querying, uh, it's it really looks like uh, uh, accessing properties on an object, right? Next child props. It's uh, right. And now, now I I run the contract that I got back from the node. This is like the class of the node. Oh, you're mm. uh, on the node object. I do a query and I can do any query on the node. I can create now that I have the contract, I can create uh, new nodes and link them and do anything else with them. Oh, so, oh, so this is this contract is, is like a, a prototype for, for a node. In a sense, right? Yeah. It's like a class. Exactly. Mm. That was part of the exercise, experimenting with a way to do objects. Mm. And I still don't know the best way to do objects. This has disadvantages and advantages. I mean, the way to do it basically is to have different, to have complete contracts for every object. If you're going to control permissions, you have to do that. You have to have different contracts for each functions. So you can expose them selectively. A different contract for, for each function. For, for each, yeah, for each method. Which is easy to do, and you know, I, you know, it's what what we do normally. Here, I was experimenting with not doing that. We were considering, like, for a linked list, having the whole set of contracts for every link was silly. We wouldn't do them that way. <laughs> this is an alternative way, where you have one contract that all the objects share. But objects are self-identifying in that they contain the contract that controls them. But when you say when you say object, you mean like an instance of 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 this node contract? Yeah, it's, it's, 
Well, an instance of the note contract is the class, <laughs> so to speak. The, uh, an instance of a node points back to the class. From, from which uh, this node is created, or? Right. But when you, when you create a node from, from one contract, uh, this node can, can, can be changed. I, I mean, the, the maps in, in this node can, can be changed, and how, how this contract relates to, to this original node uh, that is created from this contract? Well, I, mean, I, I have the, the is, this, is this contract, is this, is this contract as like definition of a type of this node, or? It's just a testing access to, the, to, to a node that was created by the, you know, in the, in the test case. Mm, I see. Okay, in the test case, I don't know if this output's up to date. Yeah, it's not up to date. Now you run it again, it'll create some more unforgeable names. But I don't know how much time we want to spend on this. <laughs> um, uh, this is definitely very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, so this was, yeah, this was with all the debugging, this output, which is so it's not current. Um, so on, on, on the GraphQL side, uh, uh, you are thinking about uh, how uh, uh, to build some kind of, uh, yeah, and end, end point to, to this uh, query. Right. Creating contract and, and mutation. So for, for adding properties on node, you'll have mutation on the GraphQL side. Right. And, and, and you can make some, some uh, simple uh, uh, matching. For example, for properties and from, for property names or, I mean, these keys in these maps, really. Yeah, um, it could be good. A um, lot of work. <laughs> I don't know who's going to help. If we can get your friends well, on board I'm, to help us. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm looking into, so uh, when I when have time, I, I will definitely uh, try something. And, uh, uh, but we have still, but, but we still have problem how to accessing uh, contracts from uh, from uh, from uh, JavaScript or, or any other language. I I seen uh, some code from from Dan. Uh, Dan was working on on uh, something that you can uh, call contracts uh, directly from JavaScript. Yeah, we do that. But I mean, it's it's it's, it's uh, like a building strings and de deploying this as a contract and getting results back. But I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure uh, how to use it uh, right now. <laughs> oh, it's not hard. Um, Not sure why. Yeah, Joshi helped me get a bug out. I passed the value of a node where I should have passed the name of the node. <laughs> uh, in this first parameter, or I don't know. Uh, first set of links. Okay. Uh, if we go to the test channel here, okay, we can. Uh, uh, 
we can uh, run this role line. Hello. Copy. Okay, we can just type eval. Colon. Based in the contract. Okay, and robot, which is JavaScript, runs it for us and returns the result. Which what I did was I printed out. three unforgeable names. This, that, and other. And the other way to do it is eval, or you put in uh, three back quotes and you type eval. And then you paste in the contract. And then you put in three back ticks. Oh, nice. Okay, and now you don't lose these back quotes, which we lost up here. The we lost up here the back quotes. Back oh, quotes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Back quotes put this in fixed font. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we lost the asterisks. I'm not sure what they do. But they got stripped out. So we have to use this form if we want to be able to copy and paste it. <laughs> yeah, and it's for, formatted in, in, in model space. So yeah, yeah, it's much better. Okay, so the JavaScript to do this is not that complicated. But I, as I understand now, we, we can only have some kind of simple communication. A simple uh, simple definition of uh, contracts that we can send to to in, in JavaScript. Oh, um, that's true because uh, it's, it's. I mean, it's it's not easy to to uh, to build the the the, the complicated Roland term in, in with with the strings in in, in JavaScript and. Uh, oh, I see. I thought you were just talking about running JavaScript. <laughs> No, no, I mean how, how to, uh, well, uh, I seen uh, uh, when, when uh, Dan was explaining, uh, uh, he was just uh, uh, building uh, uh, rolling code as a string and just deploy it and run it. But I'm, I'm not sure uh, what we build uh, like a, the, the easier way or, or, or better way. I think this is broken. We'll see. This is, you know, uh, writing with the gRPC, right? And then reading back on the channel. <coughs> and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, Uh, and how do you, how do you get a uh, standard output from from this node? Oh, I listened to the log file. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hmm. This is listening to the log file here. Oh, and just displaying this. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, well, this is a different thing, actually. I'm not sure. So I. I, I I heard someone that uh, we should, I, I think that Josh said that, uh, that uh, we should have uh, output from, from the console in, in, in gRPC, so. Yeah, it needs, there's probably. Or, or, or maybe, maybe if we could just uh, redirect uh, the standard output to some arbitrary channel, maybe this will be useful also. I, I'm thinking that uh, we need some kind of way of uh, uh, waiting for, for a message. Like, like, like you be you, like uh, we have for, for for sockets that you can just you know, like a mechanism of subscription, because 
we have a raw VM that uh, supports uh, all of these things, so it will be nice to have. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that used to work actually. And then th this is yeah. If you if you if you have continuation on some kind of on some channel, you you will wait for for a message. Yeah, this this used to give an answer back. <laughs> but you can say uh, eval, right? And it, was, it was reading on a name to get the answer, but it was uh, not complete or something. But it worked. Now it doesn't work anymore. I'm not sure. But uh, is, is this the same as, say, a wall, one plus one? No. Okay. I don't know if you want to see it. I don't. What am I doing? Um, you're asking about the tail here. If if the app if the the output on the tail of the log mm. file oh, matches, I see. matches doesn't uh, matches this pattern, then it logs it, and if there's a current message that it's working on, it replies to that message. <laughs> oh, and, uh, what is the current message? The current message is global. So when I get a response, when I get a request to do to run something, I set the current message. Oh, okay, okay. okay. While it's running, with our, any current message comes out to the, to the channel. And uh, replies uh, just sending this to 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 uh, Discord. Right. Mm. And that's, you know, that's what we, we see here, this is a reply to Jim Scarver. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His movie current message was this message. <laughs> so if I don't do an eval or a row line, there's no current message. But um, uh, when you do a val, is that uh, or do you have current message or not? Yeah, I, I set the current message uh, in the eval, but we want to we want to look at the row line. Okay, so we if we have content match equals row line. Oh, it's not it. Okay. So So we do a, a my node do deploy to deploy it. My node create block. Um, then we do a my node listen for data at name. Yeah, the, the, um, this is not real listening, it's just a read. <laughs> Mm 
Uh, but I'm not sure. What, uh, th this is for for uh, rolling uh, like a Discord command. But for for this uh, other two, eval and um, what is the first part? You are not doing deploy, but you you must send something to yeah, to, to our mod. But on, on on this first one, on on eval, for, for example, where, where where is the code that you? Uh, deploying something. De deploy. But uh, uh, can you go a little up on these first two commands? Um. Yeah, for... Oh, this is not if uh, else. Okay, this is just uh, uh, setting content. We're, yeah, we send roll line, we deploy it, then we propose it. Okay, and then we then we listen on the name, and this used to work. It doesn't work anymore. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's changed. Oh, you have else block uh, for. Can you go a little down? In in, in this else block is for. Uh, I'm still not completely sure what are you doing in, in this uh, two cases first. It's uh, reading on a name. Uh, no, no, no. In, 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 uh, on the on the beginning on the of the function. In in eval case, I'm not sure what are you sending to to Arnold. What do you mean? This is we're looking at the Roland case. In the eval case, we call uh, we call the. Uh, uh, our node eval. We don't. We're not using the API for the eval case. I had temporarily uh, <laughs> forgotten that to tell you that one in the beginning. Okay, okay but, but, but what are you using? I'm not yeah. sure. Well, You're not using gRPC, right? Uh, but yeah, this is uh, uh, Dan Dan's uh, API. So, so you're you're using a, a gRPC for eval, also? No, no, not for eval, for Rolang. Oh. Uh, but but uh, can you show me the code Rolang for now, eval? Rolang currently is Rolang colon is currently broke. It gives no output. Is it? Uh, um, And for for the eval, you are saying that uh, you're something so so uh, somehow communicating with the R node, but I'm not sure how. Are, are you using standard input or di directly? Or? Uh, flow limit. Okay, so it's it's uh, it needs update. <laughs> it's, it needs a flow limit. That's why it's broke. I have to get them uh, at yeah. some point. Should uh, pick, have to put that on the schedule for one of our work studies. Update back. But uh, you're 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 creating a deploy message. You mean yeah, uh, it's, what, what it's is not it? part of the Arch API or? Huh? Uh, uh, this if flow limit is the robot. When you when you type robot colon. Okay, it's going to get this error, but whatever row line you type here, um, uh, gets 
sent on a channel. And then it reads back from that same channel and prints the result. Okay, that's obviously not the way to do it. <laughs> and the way, and they uh, showed how to do it. I mean, it's a, there's a trick to getting the unforgeable name of the return channel. Yeah, Dan was talking about that, and uh, I'm, I'm not completely sure that I understand. Uh, yeah, well, it'd be a good project to just fix robot so that we understand it. <laughs> So the, the, the problem is uh, you're getting this uh, unforgeable name as a, as a string. It's, it's uh, written down in, in, this, uh, in, in, this, in this code. So can you turn it back and send it back to... Can't use it. <laughs> so you can only read the unforgeable name, but you cannot do anything with it. Right. Mm. I mean, I don't know exactly what we see here. Probably a hash of it or something. Hmm. Yeah. But, um, but the, this unforgeable name uh, must have some meaning to, to this instance of uh, Arnold. Because this Arnold uh, created this unforgeable name. Right. With his own private key, probably, or some uh, kind of thing. If we, if we were to do something with it. But maybe we need just some kind of. Uh, API to work with this. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, 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 Rho VM, when, when reads uh, RSpace, uh, is doing the same thing. It's just reading the, the RSpace and getting the, the unforgeable name. It's, it's the, the, same, the same string. It's the same data. I'm not sure. Interesting. X. Oh. Where do I have X? Uh, X is, is this map. And then the name of the uh, of uh, of this object that is sent in yeah, here. Oh, X is the yeah, and the result is unforgeable name and all the other stuff. So, I see map here. I got we got the whole map. We got the value of the map. Oh, oh, oh. Not the map itself. I mean, we got the, the, the contents of the map. How did we do that? I'm not sure that I understand why we seeing this. Uh, so we are sending Object, this object that contains uh, key X, and we are sending the unforgeable name M. But, oh, this is part of the, oh, okay. Oh, this is like a, uh, Oh, uh, adding uh, adding new object uh, on the head of the of this list that is printed out, right? But we also have. 
Oh yeah, but we have this the same map we have duplicated. Uh, All right. Yeah. Other map. Yeah, the map is is duplicated three times, so we must see three times. We must see X, and we see this three times. Yeah. But it's interesting that we are seeing that this yeah it's, it makes sense but this the, the order is not uh, the same I was I would, uh, expecting that the order is, is the same. Oh, the order is not it, uh, is ne never the same. I think it may be alphabetical. Hmm. But, but. and uh, this uh, unfortunate name, yeah, it's, it's the same for for X. Yeah, it's it's. It's, it's really only one unfortunate only. <laughs> and this is uh, M. Yep. Do it at M. That's weird. Let me. Uh... Let's see what happens here. Now what's going to happen? Hmm. I don't think that we can send the uh, uh, names directly. Right? This should be... Has to be a process. Yeah, and now it's the name. Yeah. Let's let's try it to, to see it. What, yeah, what it's like complain. Obviously that's an error. <laughs> we can but uh, uh, we, we we are using this M only here, so uh, this can also means uh, it's a, it's a process. Right? No, but it's created with new, and the new creates a new name, a net process. So yeah, we must quote it. We must uh, not quote it, but uh, unquote it. Right. OK. Um... Uh, it was it was an interesting discussion. <laughs> Th thanks for explaining this uh, this code. Yeah, it's it's interesting. <clears throat> All right. I guess we. We'll, uh, I, I guess we'll call it up eventually. I'll get this on YouTube. Uh, so uh, we have the uh, first uh, uh, part on uh, Casper, and then part two on uh, what do we call it? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, yeah, you, you already name it uh, uh, like an object. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, should I call? Should we call it node class? <laughs> node class, or uh, for for me, node node is uh, a little confusing because I'm not sure. Are you talking about R node right. or so? Graph. Graph is it's graph no class or uh, 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 like object object uh, is it's really appealing to me. Rolling node object. Rolling node objects, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Uh, I, will, I will let you know if, if I have some idea of uh, how to how to uh, make a GraphQL server right. based on this. What's your Discord name again? Uh, T uh, T Grospitk. I will put it in the chat. Let me. Right. It's really embarrassing that I have such trouble keeping people straight. <laughs> oh, it's lots of people. It's <laughs> yeah. so we we exchanged some some uh, messages on Discord already. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure we have. It's a good thing we have that history. That was one of the things that I hated about Slack was I'd lose the history and I wouldn't remember who somebody was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm over, overwhelmed of, of these messages on Discord, so yeah, it's it's very difficult for me to to, <laughs> to keep up. <laughs> yeah, you can. Okay, guy, thanks much. Uh, really enjoyed uh, your presentation today, and uh, thank you for. Oh, thank you for explaining Discord. <laughs> Service to the community. <laughs> right. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>